Well, how are you, my friends? The um, night has gotten away from me. It's almost midnight, and I meant to talk to you earlier, but I was uh, just taking in so much that's going on. I've got my uh, Franklin Graham, by the way, has uh, Reverend Graham. Thank God we have a president who knows how to take charge. There's been a tremendous assault against uh, the president as he's struggling actually to do everything he can to fast track uh, a couple of things that other nations have never done. America has a remarkable ability in wartime to mobilize. This was what was completely underestimated by Hitler in World War II and the Japanese, that when we're on a war footing, we mobilize brilliantly. But usually, we mobilize in agreement against a common enemy. It just so happens that the derangement that is in the soul of America is deeper than politics. It's spiritual. I think you guys know that. And so there's this assault that continues to come against the president. And because it's an election cycle, the playbook says we've got to call him a racist. We have to call him a racist. So Trump has proven he's no racist. He has flaws, uh, but his flaws are all, in a sense, uh, measurable and predictable. And, they, and they, they, they don't fall on the lines of racism, manipulation in the same sense that the left does. But what's going on, and y'all want you to catch this, is that China has a lot of financial interests in the United States and a lot of leverage, and more so than people think. The number of K Street consultants and lobbying groups that are funded by China is extraordinary. Remember, this is, in many cases, for the socialists and the, wor and the one-worlders and globalists, uh, they saw no threat with China because they really aren't about America in the first place. They're about a one-world system. But what I want you to catch is this. China is, uh, it, to be generous, China is a totalitarian system that suppresses any dissent. But once it saw that it had to deal with the, um, the corona uh, virus, it moved with totalitarian power. I don't know if you know this, but the way that they dealt with this was when the doctor's name was Li Wen Lian, was on, uh, I guess it was WeChat, is the China version of like, you know, like their social media. Uh, he spoke on December 30th and said, we're dealing with a new kind of virus. And the moment he did, eight, seven other doctors began to talk to him about their data as they were running into this new virus. All eight of them were uh, arrested that day because, you see, the uh, China actually has state-controlled telecom services, which is why Pompeo and, 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 and uh, others are warning about the uh, 5G system from China because the state-controlled telecom system... Uh, enables them to collect the records of every single citizen and monitor what they say, where they go, who, what they do, and who they associate with. The telephone becomes, in a sense, a tracking device. And what they, what they had done was they had collected data on 700 million Chinese that were within the Wuhan uh, and, and attendant territories so they could move expeditiously in shutting down that region of the country. Once they decided to, to deal with the virus and not deny it, uh, once they got past the politics of not wanting to talk about the thing, they moved with tremendous power, as dictators can. And, of course, the country all submits reverently and fearfully to the government, which controls the universities and the media. And so in America, our universities and media are controlled by leftists, which is why we have poison running in our veins. In China, they're just, they don't have that. So they were able to contain... Uh, but we don't know to what degree they've been honest with us about the data. Clearly, this came out of, uh, out of China because it, it went from there. You can see it hit Singapore and then Hong Kong and South Korea. It didn't pop up in those other places. It, it has a geographic spread. So when this came out and the doctor who exposed it uh, evident, also died of it and him and his other seven doc eight doctors that were all arrested, um, it's, that's the way that China is. Now, China then is trying to pivot because by covering up and denying the world acknowledgement of what had happened, uh, we know now that 90% of the spread could have been eliminated if the world had been given a month and a week, which was how much time they had 
uh, to be able to anticipate that this is a serious situation. And China missed a great opportunity to be able to bring in, assuming that this isn't a weapon, uh, you know, bioweapon. And of course, everyone's going to tell me, Lance, there's articles that say it originated, didn't originate in a weapon. Well, how do you know where those articles came from? This is the problem with fake news. You don't know whether China's planting the story or whether, or whether uh, the left is planting the story. I mean, do you believe Russia now in the Ukraine situation? See, the problem with media, now we have a, we have a problem. Uh, so we have, to read it. We, have to, we have to penetrate, thank God, like Pompeo, Trump, these guys, they, you know, they, they, they're, they're the real deal. They're simply dealing with what is. So they're coming down and saying, hey, man, this is a China thing, but China now is blaming the United States. They're saying the United States started this. And Iran is joining them. Iran is saying the United States started this. So when you got principalities and powers in control of media and governments, they're going to blame the United States. It's spiritual warfare all over the world. But what's happening now uh, is, I mean, when you think of 30% of the people that had the SARS virus, I think they, were, uh, they died. And so the statistics of death with other viruses is far, far higher. But I'm going to give you something that came from, from the White House uh, in a briefing I was listening to yesterday. This, the problem with this virus is that it's three times more contagious than any, any other. And because it can be carried by millennials and young people who uh, don't know they've got it, they could be spreading it to mom and dad and everybody else. And of course, they're, they're, uh, they're gregarious uh, Gen Zs and millennials. They, they're, they, they live in packs. They're, they're highly connected community-wise. So they could be carrying this thing and then, um, and then transmitting it because the older you get from 50 on, it's not 60, 70, 80, 90, it's from 50 on, there's like, a, you know, a 3% chance, 2%, then 3% chance, and then the numbers start to go up in terms of uh, vulnerability. Uh, so the, uh, the, the virus can exist on surfaces, on plastic, it could be for four days. Some people, they don't know, it's really as much as a week or maybe even more. So, you know, somebody sneezes that got it, and, and walk through and, and then wipe, you know, and then they open the door, you know, open the door and then your hands on that door and that virus could be there. But like, it's freaky. I mean, it's kind of like almost like a Stephen King type thing if you let it get to your head. So you got three more, three times more contagious. And my, of course, my nose would itch when I'm doing the broadcast. And then um, it's spread by people that don't have symptoms. Primarily the women, you can, you can rest. Pray for the men. It's older men that are primarily getting, getting this. Um, and, uh, and there's some truth to the fact that if you're O-type, you, you're less, less susceptible. But, uh, but if you have any other kind of conditions, then it, then it becomes very, very bad. Bathroom doorknobs, kitchen cabinets are unknowingly spreading. you know how many times they wash their hands in the White House? I was talking to them. 20 to 30 times a day, the people in the White House are washing their hands. Um, you need, and, and so seniors, if you're a senior citizen, I suppose senior has to be older than me, but senior, 70 years old and older, I guess, you have to treat everyone coming to your house as if, as if they are contaminated. You have to keep a distance and don't have physical contact. Of course, they're suggesting not having physical contact with anyone, even in the house, which is kind of, you're supposed to keep your six foot distance. Nobody's asked the common sense question, how do you sleep with your spouse at six feet distance? But um, we'll, we'll let that go for the moment because I, don't, I think it's just a general rule. The... Um, the, the, the probability is, if you, look, uh, if, you go to the, if you go to the internet site WorldOmeter, you're going to see how the thing is spreading and where it's going. But the United States, the president responded. Uh, he, got, he got beat up for it, but he responded in January and said, no more travel from China. Very decisive move, considering that, uh, you know, that, that now uh, in Cuomo in New York and Gavin Newsom in, in, uh, in California that these liberal states, weird, that, the, that Washington state with Seattle, California, and New York, three probably the most aggressively oppositional political states are being hit right now, the, the early first wave of, uh, of this. And what are we learning? I mean, just stop and think about this. There's, there's a sense in which we're talking about what has happened to this whole globalism argument. You know, the open borders. Well, what happened to that open borders idea? I'm, give, I'm going to give you some quick data here because this is kind of crazy. But I'm going to flip this around. Take a look at this. That uh, for, in nations with minimal border controls, France, they got 91,000, 9,100 cases. Italy, 35,000 cases. Spain, 17,000. Germany, 13,000. A coronavirus in countries with strong border controls, meaning they've already said they're not, they're not open borders. 
and Hungary, 73, Poland, 325, Israel, 529, Russia, 147. I think, uh, and I think we got we got some other ones in there that what uh, with Singapore, they were able to flip that thing around uh, radically, and they did that because they just stopped seeding people from mainland China. They refused to do it. Hong Kong, on the other hand, uh, sorry, they they got a bigger problem because they were receiving three flights a day from China. By the way, uh, why is it that Italy has the problem that they've got? You notice that Italy's getting whacked. Well, because Italy did the Silk Road deal with China, so. They had a disproportionate number of, of daily flights coming in from China, working with them on their infrastructure projects. So you see how that works. And so it's, 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 a, it's a study right now in how you really don't want open borders, do you? And when it comes to a moment like this, you want to be able to have, you want to be able to have control of your borders. And by the way, China has no problem locking down, like I said, 700 million lockdown. The moment they came to terms with the fact that forget our international reputation, we got to protect our, our our industrial base or our economy will cl will collapse. Now we have a whole different kind of a, a situation going on. But I, I want to turn back to the um, uh, the what's happening with the United States. I, I heard uh, Gavin Newsom make this announcement about California. His his calculus is that like some twenty million of the forty million are going to be are going to be um, having this this illness. I I, I personally, looking at the data, I think that that's like an overreaction. You're taking what the the world's um, is that uh, what is it the seventh largest or fifth largest economy, maybe the third largest economy, uh, just California alone. You shut that down, and you're affecting. Uh, I'm more concerned about the economic fallout of what's happening than I am about the virus, because you can look at the statistics. Even though I just got done saying three times uh, more. Uh, uh, contagious than other flus. The fact of the matter is, it's the, it's the cure that could be more dangerous than the illness uh, because the deaths have, have been, have been, have been uh, disciplined. And the more people that are going to be tested and come out positive with uh, the coronavirus, which doesn't always have strong symptoms, the more the death rate is going, the mortality rate is going to shrink down to probably something more like 1.5%. And it's going to be 1.5% primarily males and probably and primarily older men. So, uh, but the economy is, is, is what you ought to be praying about because uh, the, if the enemy can destroy America, if the enemy can take down this government and Trump, uh, I don't have to tell you what the alternative is. So, and this goes to, to part of what I wanted to talk about right now real quickly, which is the, uh, the international scene. And, and what's happening, like the president, you guys did see this today, right? I, I got to show you this because the president has had to deal with the China thing. It's like what the left is hitting it with now. They, because they want to call him a racist all the time, right? So Trump just had it today in the... Uh, here's, here's what went down. Take a look. Why don't you see this? Is it possible that your impulse to put a positive spin on things may be giving Americans a... The president's trying to encourage them on drug development. We're working on it. What do you say to Americans who are scared, though? I guess nearly 200 dead, 14,000 who are sick, millions, as you witnessed, who are scared right now. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Yeah. 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 I think it's a very nasty question, and I think it's a very bad signal that you're putting out to the American people. The American people are looking for answers, and they're looking for hope. And you're doing sensationalism. And uh, the same with NBC and Comcast. I don't call it, I don't call it Comcast. I call it Comcast. Let me just have for Comcast. Let me just say something. That's really bad reporting. And you ought to get back to reporting instead of sensationalism. He's right. How about reporting instead of the gotcha questions? To the American people. Uh, it's kind of interesting because you see what they're what they're doing. They had four follow-up questions on. Isn't this uh, what you're saying racist about China? Uh, and, and, you know, and Trump is saying, look, this is, and by the way, China's reporting the United States is the source of this. I told you that. But the reality is that um, the, the left is going to continue to, instead of pulling together, like I said, we have wartime situation here, economically, dealing with this, um, this virus. But it, the left will not let up on this because they want, they simply want to take this president out. And, and racism is part of their game, their playbook for their election. They have to, because they know that race, 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 race line actually, actually is working for them, in spite of the fact that uh, there's no question that the thing, 
that this virus's origin origin is um, is coming from China, and uh, and that previous you know illnesses, uh, whether it's the Spanish flu or 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 the MERS, which is the Middle East, you know, um, virus, uh, that, that regions and names, the German, you know, the, what is it, uh, uh, you know, the, what was it, the German, what was that? It was discovered by a German, the, the German flu, German smallpox, whatever it is. The, uh, that almost all of the, of the epidemics that we've had in history have had, had a name that had something to do with uh, the region or, or geography or origin that was able to fix a location on the beginning of the thing. So, so where is this attack coming from? I'm going to say this again. When you're praying for America, this is a spiritual battle in our country. And, as, uh, and, and this spirit is going to continue to manifest, but it is a spirit of strife. We have to pray that the, there will be kind of a deep settled uh, revulsion and resistance to the politicizing and manipulation of discontent and discord for political gain, that it will be exposed for what it is. You know, Jez, Jannies and Jambres, the Apostle Paul wrote uh, in, the, in, the, in the New Testament, he wrote and said, as, as these men opposed Moses and their folly was revealed to everybody, um, the folly of these also should be revealed. We have to pray that the folly of these people is revealed, meaning that if people are not sincerely, it's one thing you can have a sincere difference. You can have a sincere opinion. But if you're being, if you're simply got a, a foul spirit and you're looking for opportunities to attack uh, a leader, there's something wicked about it that needs to be revealed as wicked, and we need to judge it as such. And spiritually, with all the prayer going on, I think we need to we need to hit that as well, uh, because the the uh, the uh, I believe that the Chinese propagandists uh, are are have more sympathy in in the left in the United States and our in the socialist community than there is um, in the United States with the left and uh, respect and appreciation for the United States. And I think we ought to start to expose where mainstream media is participating in that narrative that is taking down America and attacking its own president uh, instead of standing with him. And I'm talking about the Atlantic is doing that uh, right now and, uh, and other, uh, and other, other um, media labels. However, having said that, I want to give you one thought and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, take a look at a, a Bible verse and 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 pray because the Lord is moving in a powerful way to really put uh, a, a Sabbath in place where so many of us are being reconnected with families. So many people, it's almost like the Jews coming into the Passover where the blood is being put on the doorposts and and uh, so that, so that the the death angel passes over. There's, uh, there's, there's reason to believe that God is having his way in the whirlwind. At the same time, there's reason to believe that we have to be on a, a greater hypervigilance in terms of all the calls to prayer and such because America in a wartime footing can mobilize. And what you're seeing is innovation happening, which is something the United States can do. We've got to see more of it in terms of the, in terms of the, uh, the medical breakthrough. And you've heard about the malaria drugs and the various ones that are the president's fast tracking and the testing capacity, which is working with drive-through testing and the, the, um, and the innovative capacity of the United States. Literally, whole industries are retooling now in order to take this on like a war. And that, and that, that makes it very hopeful. But let me share with you something that I, I read about the pandemic that had broken out during the period of Isaac Newton. You guys remember Newton. And this is to encourage you. Uh, Isaac Newton had to work from his home because of a pandemic that had struck in 1665 and it hit London. It was a London plague. And Isaac Newton was a college student in his early 20s at that time. And what Isaac Newton, uh, he hadn't yet discovered uh, the bacteria, uh, uh, scientists hadn't discovered the bacteria that caused the plague, but people were practicing in their own primitive way a form of social distancing, uh, what Americans and others around the world are practicing today because of the, of the coronavirus. And in Cambridge, where Newton was studying, he sent students home to, uh, they were all sent to return home to their, for their studies, and Newton was one of them. And uh, for about a year, he spent away from his professors. He called it the year of wonders, because Isaac Newton, uh, as a believer, was being visited by God with unique insights into mathematical papers that were the part of his early calculus, conducting experiments while he was in that period of quarantine, from which sprung all of the theories on optics, began to ponder the theory of gravity. When he returned to Cambridge, 
1667, he came with the theories that were birthed in the isolation of what he went through in the London plague. Two years later, he became a professor. And uh, right now, uh, Americans are being forced to work at home, study at home, and uh, kind of like an isolation. It's called, in, in terms of destiny processing, there's a language for this called isolation processing. It's when God puts a parenthesis, puts you into a, a cocoon, and, and shoves you in there, and it's kind of, you're wrapped up within this confined space, and in the cocoon, God is starting to birth something in you, put new thoughts in He's de He's delivering you, in a sense, from the outside uh, stimulus of going places and forcing kind of a geographic visitation, if you will, of the Spirit of God uh, to you. And while we're there at this time, I want you to think about just like um, Isaac Newton. This isn't this isn't a time that's being wasted. This is actually a time that God has set, and 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 the whole world is being shaken right now. Which is why I want to go to pray because I've said all along that the Book of Haggai is the is the book. For where we are, Isaiah 45 prophesies the era of Cyrus's rising. And Bolsonaro is a Cyrus in, uh, in, in uh, Brazil. And uh, Victor Orban is a Cyrus in Hungary. And we're looking at the Cyrus era where Cyrus leaders are rising. And when Cyrus rose, he, um, he gave the decree for something to happen and set some things in motion. As, as we believe Trump has done with Israel. And with acknowledge and recognizing their right to, to nation status, and and how he moved the embassy, and so there's this period of decrees going on, and Haggai addresses something. The prophet, when the first Jews were going back, and the decree that uh, Cyrus had given to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple, the Jews went back, but they got stalled. And Ezra talks about this. They got stalled because of discouragement and opposition and negative press, and there were deep state intrigues that were happening. Specifically, Ezra speaks in uh, chapter 4 about counselors, lawyers, litigators, legislators, and, and rumor mongers that created an apparatus that surrounded the remnant that was trying to rebuild the house of God, and they got discouraged and fatigued and disoriented and decided to retreat from the transformation of culture and went to building their ministries, their houses, their homes and their little businesses. In other words, the people of God in the period of Cyrus got tired of the resistance and went to their own vision and their own activity. And the prophet Haggai came to them and said something interesting. Evidently, there was an economic crisis because the prophet comes to them and says, did you not notice? The Lord says, consider your ways because you are, you're, you're all laboring and your money just all took off. You're, uh, you're earning wages and it all goes into a bag with holes. All the entire gains of the Trump economy just got sucked out of existence. And so it's as though the Lord is saying, consider what your priorities are. Actually, you who knows, but that the Lord isn't using this crisis as part of what Haggai says, which is, I'm going to shake the nations. I'm going to shake every nation for one purpose. I'm shaking it to wake up my people to get involved with my house, my mission and my building. I think America is God's building project. I think the, I think the restoration of America is a building project that secures liberty around the world. I think whatever country you're in, your nation state is battling deep state or it's battling um, Islamic extremism or it's battling communist um, you know, um, uh, elite totalitarian religious suppression. These things are real in the world right now. And what's pushing against it in Boris Yeltsin in the UK and with, and as I said, with Orban and with Bolsonaro and with Trump is sovereign nation states. That's nation states that allow for the practice of religious liberty. And as much as Russia is a, is a nasty actor in so many things, the strange thing about Russia is that the Pentecostal, the Protestant, and the uh, Greek Orthodox Christians had so much power and influence with, uh, with the uh, Putin that he does not want to displease them. It's kind of like Trump with the evangelicals. And so he has, uh, he has rendered it 
um, uh, has rendered homosexuality and same-sex marriage unlawful in their constitution and in their articles. This is one reason why the United States and this deep state hates Putin so much and is so obsessed with Russia is because Russia refuses to bend the knee to the gay agenda. You don't know that, but I'm telling you, that's part of the, the absolute animosity spiritually against him. Uh, but uh, as, as, as much of a rascal as he is, he keeps one eye very keenly uh, upon the influence of the Christian moral of the nation because he does not want to lose them. And so here you have an interesting situation where uh, Putin actually has a greater practice in a sense of the boundaries of culture than the rest of Europe does, which is succumbed to the um, social justice genre and, and limits freedom of speech. So I'm just telling you, the world isn't always what you think it is. Haggai says, hey, the nations are going to shake. And the Lord says, not only are the nations going to shake, but I'm going to shake them because of the, the glory of my latter house is going to be greater than the former house. I want you to think about this. Jesus was promised nations as his inheritance. And so many Christians, we're big on revival. I'm telling you, I'm talking to my own tribe right now. We're big on revival. And even now we're praying for revival. To us, the solution to everything is getting uh, people in a revival and packing out meetings where people get saved. I understand that. I was there for like 30 years of my life. Because if a person gets saved, it affects all of their thinking. It, it affects what they do in, in terms of abortion and sexuality and stuff like that. But you see, it doesn't restore the gates and the walls. And that's what Haggai was setting up. He was setting up Nehemiah, setting up the restoration of the walls and the gates and the definition of culture. You can't let media and journalism and academia and politics and the economy and big business go down the tube with, with, with bizarre belief systems that militate against the word of God and against the people of God because eventually they're going to shut religion down, shut freedom down uh, because they're going to consider you intolerant. This, is, this thing is coming to a head in the United States. And I think that we've been disengaged from the battle. We've been, we have not been, our leaders have not been engaged as they ought to be. And so because they don't want to get involved with politics and in culture wars. Well, I think God is saying you've got a responsibility to stand up uh, and you've got to, you have to think about sh saving your nation because if you, eat, if you continue going on in the direction of your own house and your own prosperity, your own vision, your own ministry, and how many of us, come on, all the social media and internet companies, all the, all, all the folks that I know that are out there doing their business building, and they're not actually out there in the front lines of this deteriorating culture and, and uh, the crises of Western civilization. They don't want to get their hands dirty with that subject. Well, God's saying, well, I just blew all your money away. How's that? And then you got a plague in the streets. And then, you're, and then you're all shut down in your houses. And so then you got the media with their virus, their cranial coronavirus, um, talking against the president and manifesting like yapping wolves and dogs. Uh, and you got to look at that and you got to go, Lord, my God, my God, my God, you've got to deliver us. Well, I think if we cry out to God and we repent in our hearts, he's going to call us to get involved with the battle that is in our nation. It's not just going to be uh, a revival happening down the street. No, thank God I don't have to get involved. You're going to have to get involved with the battle for the soul of your nation. And I, and I do believe that this is what Haggai said. He said, you better get involved with that building project. And he rebukes the, he rebukes the believers. And he says, my house is lying in ruins while all of you are seeking your own ministries, your own businesses, your own profit, your own prosperity, your own dreams, your own prophecies, your own vision. Boom, there it goes. Boom, there it goes. Now, what are you going to do? And what they did was they repented. And, they, and it, was, it was Zerubbabel, the governor, which is a political marketplace role. He's talking to the marketplace, by the way. He didn't go down and talk to the preachers. Isn't it funny? I'm talking to some of you Christians in the marketplace. He went to Zerubbabel, the governor. And then he went to the, to the preacher, uh, Joshua. And then he went to the remnant, which is you guys that are watching this now. All it takes is a remnant, the right preachers, and the right marketplace leaders. And, that, and then the Lord says, go to work. I'm with you from this day forth. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to start to shake the heavens and the earth, but I'm going to prosper you. And indeed, the, the, the pivot happened. And they went on with that building. And in that day, they, they saw a visitation of God. And then Nehemiah came and Ezra came and they saw phase two. They went from building a house to building the wall. The nation had walls and gates, gates and walls, gates of influence and walls of boundaries, boundaries around their behavior, boundaries around their thinking. Oh, we're going to have to see something else happening in America. Um, and not just, um, we're going to have to answer the, the questions that are being asked by a secular world about the relevance of Christianity. 
What is Christian economics? What is Christian enterprise? What is Christian solutions for the inner city, for the poor? What about injustice? What's the Christian answer where race is concerned? If we don't show up and tell the truth, the virus, the coronavirus intellectually has already started to spread around this country and it would take down this blessed nation in the next election cycle. So we're standing right now in a very precarious place. You want to go to Zechariah, the Zechariah and Haggai, back to back, those two prophets, an old guy and a young guy. They prophesied, and uh, they prophesied to Zerubbabel, the marketplace Christian in the era of Cyrus. They prophesied to Joshua, the local church pastor and preacher creature in the era of Cyrus. And, uh, and, they, and, they, and they both prophesied that God was giving them authority to walk in a heavenly place in the courts of heaven, and that he was going to move the great mountain that was in front of them, the great challenge that was in front of them, and he was going to do it with shouts of grace. And, uh, and the Lord says that mountain is going to move. You ever see the Egyptian pyramids? You know what that is? They were formed in the shape of mountains because man in the Middle East always knew that the mountain of God, believe it or not, was in Eden. Eden was a mountain that was a mountain region that was there in Eden. And so they, uh, so they always saw the mountain as a symbol of God's uh, reign and, and, and the supernatural, which is why it says in, in the book of Zechariah that Zerubbabel was told that, uh, who are you, O great mountain? You're going to come flatten down and because God is going to uh, uh, bring forth, get this, the capstone. What's the capstone? It's weird. It's the capstone is the one that comes down on top. Jesus is coming down the top of the mountains. God's coming down to judge the gates. God is coming down to invade the studios uh, in the media, and he's coming down to invade uh, the, the economic centers. Look at Wall Street. Just had to stop doing their stock, their stock exchange. Had to freeze for the first time in like, the history of Wall Street. It's cleared out. It's God saying, hey, I'm blowing on this thing. You better be still and know that I'm God and start getting, paying attention to what I'm saying. And how's it going to happen? I love this. With shouts of grace. Shouts of grace. That's kind of, that's kind of cool. Shouts of grace, shouts of God's undeserved power and supernatural ability. God's undeserved and unearned power and supernatural ability. It's God coming with a steady current of supernatural power right now. And he's coming upon the Zerubbabels, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts, the Lord of angels, the Lord of angelic armies. I'm going to give you charge of my courts. If my people will, who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their self-absorption and their own agenda and begin to rise up for America and begin to rise up for the sheep nations of the world and begin to put first the seeking of the kingdom, then I am going to move in an unprecedented way. I sense the Lord saying, and I'm going to give you the authority to judge the virus and stop it in its tracks. And I'm going to cause my my house uh, to, be, to be visited with singular power and presence, and I'm going to begin to rebuild again the broken down walls and restore the gates that have been burnt with fire. If you'll just ask for rain, if you'll ask for rain, the Lord says, at the time of the latter rain, I'm going to cause the flashing clouds and lightning. I'm going to give you showers, and there's going to be a harvest of grass in the field, and I'll restore double for what you've lost. I'll restore double for what, uh, for what you've lost. For when the storm is passed, and the storm has subsided. I'm going to send the double of my grace and anointing. And with shouts of grace, you're going to speak peace to the nations. And the church is going to see one great mighty move of God. America has another move in its loins. I'm prophesying. America has another mighty move of God in its loins. And it's, a, it's going to require us to press in and birth it and push and push this thing out. But uh, as I'm saying that, I am not indifferent to the fact that this uh, this good president is harried and harassed at every turn, trying to find hope, trying to find words of encouragement, trying to speak to the soul of America. Do not be silent. Do not be indifferent. Do not uh, shrug your shoulders as so many cavalier Christians do. Oh, I wish he wasn't this way or that way because this man is the gift that God sent at a time of crisis. And I prophesied that he would be during the fourth turning, the crucible of American history, the turning point of America's affairs as it was in the revolution. It wasn't the Civil War. It wasn't the Depression of World War II. And we're heading into a combination of cultural civil war, economic, a of, 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 of potential depression, and, uh, and the potential of other agents operating aggressively around the world. And this man, Trump, has got, a, has got a handle that, and God put the right man at the right time, and you helped pray him in. So now you're going to have to pray America through the storm, 
Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that what you're doing is greater than anything that we saw that you have caused a divine stillness and a rest, as it were. And, and it's as though uh, the whole earth has become silent. And you've, and you've cleaned out the marketplaces of uh, trading and stocks. And you've, and you've literally shrunk, uh, Lord, that which was swelling with prosperity. And you've gotten our attention. And though, and though the nation may not understand it, the people of God, the Zerubbabels, the Joshuas, we know you are speaking. Consider your ways. And Lord, we are considering now. We are considering now. It is our responsibility, Lord, to repent, our responsibility to humble ourselves. We have not engaged, Lord God, this day. We have not walked in the unity that is the prerequisite for your blessing. We have not labored uh, locally in our cities and communities, politically or spiritually, in the spirit of Christ. We haven't wrestled through the tough issues. The body of Christ has been willing to be fragmented and float along, as it were, on political and economic ties with other people carrying on the battle. But, oh, Lord, I thank you that you are causing a shifting right now. We own it. We own the condition of our nation. It happened on our watch, those of us that are 60. It happened in our lifetime. The last 40 years is ours. It's our, 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 our problem, and we own it. We failed to be the influence that others have. Other minorities that with, with agendas have been able to put their money and their influence into discipling the nation while we sought other things, Lord. But now we realize that we have not cared for and stewarded the liberties, the blessings, the institutions, the gates you've given us, the universities we've allowed to be gobbled up, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, cor the corporations we've allowed to swing where they want to go. And uh, Lord, we've allowed the uh, entertainment and media to just do what it wants to do. And Lord, then we allowed politics to be able to be a selfish pursuit and all of us voted for whatever would get us what we wanted. And Lord, we, we, we deserve, Lord, that which, uh, we, we deserve more judgment than you've given because you're merciful. And we're confessing these sins, the abortion uh, uh, that has happened, the, uh, the tide of, of, of perversion and confusion regarding gender and sexuality and, 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 and morality and in every direction, Lord God. I almost hesitate to use the terminology for fear I'll, get, I'll, be, I'll be judged uh, harshly. But Lord, your word has been neglected and denied and we haven't respected you. And we, we've been selfish in our pursuits and cavalier in our critiques of authority. We haven't prayed, we haven't wept, we haven't fasted, but we've got big mouths and we talk a lot. Lord, forgive us for having offended you and, and grieved the majesty of your grace, your mercy, your spirit, and your patience with us has been do, exasperated time and again, but you still extend your hand and you call us to greatness and you call us to, to, to not let the, the torch on that Statue of Liberty be extinguished in the New York Harbor to see that Liberty Bell cracked, but not broken in half. And so, Lord, we are asking you for mercy. We're asking you that in our isolation, in our homes, in our places where we're, we're locked up, visit us here, Lord, and, uh, and, and, and talk among us. We have the social media. We have the ability to talk among ourselves, to build windows of revelation and hope and communication, and to build walls of unity, and to begin to put the stones together. I pray, Lord, that when the storm passes and this, and this plague subsides, that the economy will have still a heartbeat in it that can be resuscitated back to life, but that it won't go back to business as usual, but you will have done a work in your church. You will have done a work of repentance in us. You will have done a work of sobering in us, that it's more than just us praying to stop the plague and get on with life. It's actually a reformation and a reforming of the church in America right now. Lord, we believe the storm that came upon the ship that Jonah was in was not because of them that were in the ship, but because of Jonah. He was going in the wrong direction. And so, Lord, we're willing to believe that you're shaking up and silencing and putting to stillness the whole earth and bring it around to the United States into the church right here. And, Lord, we repent for our, for our failure to steward the blessing you've given us. And we're willing to resolve to do differently. Now, there's not enough of us yet, Lord. So I pray the fire of this message. And the, and, the, and the if I'm wrong, then I repent of being wrong, but I do not believe I am wrong, beloved. I believe I've said Trump was a Cyrus. You get the book. I predicted. I even wrote about Heidi Baker talking about economic collapse and bread lines with people with Lexuses pulling up to get into lines for food. And I'm praying that that is not going to be uh, the chapter that's here. But I'm telling you right now, I put it in a book called God's Chaos Candidate. And I said this is the fourth turning in Trump derangement syndrome would hit the media. And this man would be like Churchill in a crisis. He's trying to encourage us now. we got to pray and we got to push through this. I'm asking you, Father, 
that you will cause like-minded brothers and sisters right now to come together and say, what must we do? How should we work together? How can we lock our shields? How can we join our arms? How can we come out of this thing so the church doesn't go back to business as usual, but it's unusual business that God's doing with us, and I'm praying for an unusual move of God even right now. I pray for angels to visit the houses, angels to visit the homes. For the plague shall not come nigh thy dwelling. The plague shall not come nigh thy dwelling. And that there's going to be benevolence. There's going to be ministry and outreach. And you're going to show us how. Now, it is, it is for us to care for the poor and for them that have not. And I'm asking you, Lord, to give us boldness and confidence, even as you give us humility and grace, 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 undeserved power uh, and undeserved capacity to be able to walk with you and to overcome sin and overcome fear and overcome the selfishness that's held us back. I'm asking you guys to, to share this message and uh, I'll, I'll divide it in half as I sometimes do. People get tired of long messages and I understand that, I do too, but uh, I'll put this in two parts. But I really do believe that, that uh, the president needs to be stood, uh, strengthened and stood for. China is the emerging principality that hell wants to put on the world scene to govern the nations and it's premature the dragon wants to devour the eagle. But uh, if, if America can overcome its division and the church can overcome its, its indifference and its confusion, there'll be a power that's going to bring visitation and there'll be one great awakening coming to the United States. But it's not for the purpose of just um, making our, our, our ministries flush and sinking our boats with fish. It's about rebuilding walls and gates and boundaries because it's not about America. It's about the Philippines. It's about Thailand. It's about Indonesia. It's about Japan. It's about Australia and New Zealand. It's about South Africa. It's even about what God wants to do invading Saudi Arabia. It's about the, it's the Iranian Christians that are pushing back right now. It's about the, the European Christians that are praying in Germany and Amsterdam and in the UK right now and Sweden. Oh, my God, it's about Brazil. It's about Guatemala and Central America. The, the Lord Jesus, I'm hearing it right now. Read Psalm 2. He's been given nations. He's been given nations. He's been given nations. And, it's, it's, and I believe that we have one more surge of something that must happen in the United States and that this light must not go down. The church must not be confused. Nations is what God's given us, and we're called to go forth for nations. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you share this? Will you play it, play it back and think, think about it? Pray over it. Read Haggai. Read Zechariah. Read the, read the uh, Isaiah 45. Read Ezra, the first five chapters. Tell me if I've lost my mind. I don't believe I have. I don't believe I believe it. This is exactly the biblical period of time we're in. We're in the time of the reconstruction, the restoration. Uh, we're in the period of Cyrus and the rebuilding of the house and the wall in the United States, not for the United States, but for the sheep nations of the earth. We must not mess this moment up in Jesus' name. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Pray for the physicians, the doctors, the nurses that are working overtime. May they just be covered with the grace and protection and the blood of Jesus. And may, they, may, 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 uh, may California not see 50%. Lord, the, the governor's actually believing for 50% of, the, of California to be under the influence of the plague. But it shall not be in Jesus' name. No, no, no. And I thank you, Lord, that, that, uh, that one uh, can put a thousand to flight and that one believer, that one believer believing is going gonna, is gonna to be able to push this thing off of a thousand people and that we're going to see this thing turned around. But understand, beloved, that God himself is controlling what's happening because he's producing in us an introspection and a, and a searching because he's not pleased, I'm telling you, he's not pleased with the way the church has stewarded its inheritance. He's not impressed or pleased with the way we've handled things, and I don't believe we've stood and strengthened the hands of our own leadership and the gifts that God's given. We've been critics, we've been smug, we've been observers, we've been distracted, and I really believe it's time for us to take heed and consider our ways because God's visiting us economically as well as silencing our activities. And he's talking to us in the church is the answer to the problem. And the answer is bigger than we think. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. It's good to see all of you. I look forward to talking. Send your comments. I read your comments. I see my son Carl is watching. I just saw that. He's a great young man. He's going to be putting on podcasts. He's going to be interviewing people that have taken mountains. Carl's going to interview people that have taken mountains. He's going to be doing it. What a great time to launch a podcast thing. He's going to do videos, and I'm lining up friends of mine to talk to him. He's going to interview them and ask the powerful questions about how they took their mountains and what God's saying to them now. 
Hallelujah. And all of you sons and all, all of you that have sons and daughters, I'm telling you, this is the season of all the prophecies that God ever gave you about your sons and daughters. The Lord says he's, a, he's, a, he's moving now in the bloodlines. He's moving now in the bloodlines. He's breaking generational curses and iniquities and uprooting them. Even now, there's a sweeping of God's spirit in the households of the righteous, and he's plucking up by the roots the uh, activities that have tried to militate against the inheritance that God has wanted to give. And now you're going to even see your households coming into alignment, and you're going to see the assignments of God, the uh, Abrahams and Isaac and Jacobs. The three-generation assignments are being established right now. They're coming strong into you that's listening to me. They're coming strong to your sons and daughters. And there's another generation coming out of them. There's another generation coming out of them. Evidently, it's not over yet. That's what I'm hearing the Lord say. There's another generation coming out of them. They will have uh, the, their, their sons and daughters. And in the Holy Ghost, we're, uh, we're called to rise up. Let's finish strong. My generation, 60 years old and older, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, not, be, uh, let's not go out with a whimper, coughing, and, and, and go out with Corona. Let's, let's go out with the hands upon the pillars and bring the Philistine houses down in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I right, love you guys. I'll be talking to you soon. Bless you. Hi, I'm Lance Walna. I want to thank you for watching this broadcast. And if you'd like to see more of what we've got coming up, and you never know when something new is going to be interesting, just hit the subscribe button right there, and I look forward to seeing you in a future broadcast.